Greetings, greetings, greetings to you all. Amen. And welcome to the Be That Man Men's School of Ministry. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Yes, I'm back with you again. Pastor Colin is in the house. Amen. And uh, before we do anything else, we are going to pray. Father, we give you praise. We glorify your matchless name in all the earth. We bless you and praise you. We worship and adore you and we exalt you. Father, we pray that the Holy Spirit will be the prime mover of inspiration during this time of ministry. We pray, Father God, that your name will be magnified and honoured. We pray that this word will transform us, Father God, encourage us and edify us as we come into your presence with exceeding joy. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. <coughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Well, it's so good to be back with you again. Uh, we do apologize for last week how we weren't able to get the program out. But this week, we are ready. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, the last time that we were together, um, we opened up by reading 1 Corinthians 16, verses 13 and 14. And we're continuing with lessons in manhood from the Apostle Paul. Lessons in manhood from the Apostle Paul. And we started some weeks back by looking at 1 Corinthians 16, verses 13 and 14, where it says, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong, let all things be done with charity. In other words, let all things be done with love. We established that the Apostle Paul gives us five divine mandates with the intention of grabbing hold of the readers and calling them to step up as men. The five mandates that the Apostle Paul gives are what she stand fast in which we spoke about last week, stand fast in the faith, and also we're going to be uh, quit ye like men and be strong. And then it said, let all things be done with charity. Those are the five mandates. Well, today we will be covering quit ye like men. Quit ye like men. Bless the name of the Lord. Now, the Greek word for quit you like men is Andridzomahi, andridzomahi, and it means to make a man of or to make brave, to show oneself a man or to be brave. And it's really about being brave, it's about courage. At this point, the Apostle Paul appeals to the brothers at Corinth to act like men. His call is not like popular concepts of today of manning up or to buck up. Paul is calling those in Corinth to act mature, act like adults, grown-ups, put away childish thinking and behaviour. It is the word we so often need to hear from older men in our lives. Men who can, in love, put their arm around us and call us out. We need older men who take Titus chapter 2 seriously and find opportunities to say, you need to act like a man, you're acting like a boy. Titus 2 and verse 2 from the Amplified Bible reminds us, urge the older men to be temperate, venerable, serious, sensible, self-controlled and sound in the faith, in the love and in the steadfastness and patience of Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Titus 2 verses 6 to 8 then says, in a similar way, urge the younger men to be self-restrained and to behave prudently, taking life seriously. And show your own self in all respects to be a pattern and a model of good deeds and works, teaching what is unadulterated, showing gravity, 
having the strictest regard for truth and purity of motive with dignity and seriousness and let your instruction be sound and fit and wise and wholesome vigorous and irrefutable and above censure so that the opponent may be put to shame finding nothing discrediting or evil to say about us bless the name of the lord i want to listen very carefully to all of these scriptures because they are really setting a standard of what manhood is about amen it is about not just encouraging people or calling people out but you making sure that you have put what god says into action in your own life amen as men praise the lord titus 2 verses 11 to 15 says this for the grace of god his unmerited favor and blessing has come forward has appeared for the deliverance from sin and the eternal salvation for all mankind it has trained us to reject and renounce all ungodliness irreligion and worldly passion desires to live discreet temperate and self-controlled upright devout spiritually whole lives in this present world amen so we have a duty to become spiritually uh, spiritually alert amen you know what we have to be spiritually mature glory be to god and that is what quitchy like men is about having the courage hallelujah to stand upon the word of god and don't even feel ashamed of it verse 13 continues in titus 2 awaiting and looking for the fulfillment the realization of our blessed hope even in the glorious appearing of our great god and savior christ jesus the messiah the anointed one who gave himself on our behalf that he might redeem us purchase our freedom from all iniquity and purify for himself a people to be peculiarly his own people who are eager and enthusiastic about living a life that is good and filled with beneficial deeds tell them all these things call glory to god urge advise encourage warn and rebuke with full authority let no one despise or disregard or think little of your of you conduct yourself and your teaching so as to command respect oh bless the name of the lord so as you hear this charge from the apostle paul where do you need and ask yourself that question where do you need most to mature where are you failing to engage in your god-given assignment and identity do you need to step up and lead these are questions that we need to ask ourselves as men remember paul writes to the leaders in the church at corinth he tells them to be watchful stand firm in the faith and act like men be strong let all that you do be done in love praise the name of the lord this is the easy to read version praise god the emphasis is about maturity about being grown up paul made a similar contrast between adult man and a child when he wrote three chapters earlier in first corinthians 13 11 when he said when i was a child i spoke as a child i understood as a child i thought as a child but when i became a man i put away childish things so what does he do here where well, he contrasts being a man with being a child and he is not criticizing children children act like children but adults are not supposed to act like children 
So Paul is consistent in his concern for maturity, not in pursuing masculinity and femininity. So in his letter to the Ephesians, he describes the ultimate end of discipleship. And that is until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, uh, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's what it tells us in Ephesians 4 and verse 13 from the New King James. So God, when he is teaching us from his word to do certain things, he's, there, is, there is a place that he wants us to attain to. And here in Ephesians 4.13, it says, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. So he's talking about maturity oh glory be to god maturity amen paul uses the idea of man to be fully mature as opposed to being immature and this is how many church fathers have understood it consider this from didymus the blind writing in the fourth century he said this paul tells them to be courageous and strong like an athlete or a soldier of Christ, doing everything with love toward God and each other. And that's taken from the Pauline commentary from the Greek church. Writing in that same century was Ambrosista. He said of this verse, they were to stand firm, being told in confessing what they had been taught, being sorry, being bold, sorry, in confessing what they had been taught. They were to be strong in both word and deed because it is the right combination of these which enables people to mature healthfully. Amen. So let me read that to you again. This is from Ambrosista. He was a fourth century writer. And he said this, they were to stand firm being bold in confessing what they had been taught. They were to be strong in both word and deed, because it is the right combination of deeds which enables people to mature. This is a commentary on Paul's epistles. So through the Apostle Paul, in his word to the entire church at Corinth, God is not calling his people to act according to social norms, of what is masculine. Rather, he wants all of his children to demonstrate the bravery and the courage lacking in the immature in the faith. Our goal, therefore, my beloved brothers, is to follow hard after God, to grow in maturity, and thus to demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit in our lives and beyond. Amen. Glory be to God. So there is a standard that God wants us to get to. But we need to be brave. We need to have courage, hallelujah, to get that standard without being ashamed. As the Apostle Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Bless the name of the Lord. So regardless of its universal application, men need to be challenged to act like men. And that is what the Bible does for us. We need to live out our callings as men to be and do what God has called us to be and do. Glory be to God. The basic life change stages most men experience, spiritual life of man, singleness, married life and fatherhood. These are the basic stages that most men experience. Spiritual life, singleness, married life, and fatherhood. So we need to build a foundation. So let's build a foundation for thoughts on these areas of life by talking about what makes a man. 
because we need to encourage each other from the scriptures. I want to talk to men today about being godly, being gracious, being discerning, amen, being spiritually mature. Remember Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 16, 13 and 14, which is the scripture that we opened with, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong, let all that you do be done in love. Bless the name of the Lord. So your every action must be done with love. Consider God's every action in our lives. He does it because he loves us. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So whatever God sets up for us, how he wants us to operate, how he wants us to live, it's because of his love for us and he wants the best for us. Amen. So every action, our every action, whatever we do, what, whoever we have to talk with or minister with or counsel with, whatever the situation, every action must be done with love. So the Greek word here is defined to make a man or to make brave or to be brave. Also the word brave is to do with having courage. So notice as Paul shows, there is no dioptomy between being loving and be in men. To be a man in our world, a biblical man, will look different than much of what passes for manhood in the world and even in contemporary Christian cultural expressions. Bless the name of the Lord. This is what God redeems men to be. We aren't afraid to act like men, to be courageous and to be godly examples in our home and in our community. And that is what Quit Ye Like Men is all about, being brave enough, hallelujah, to be godly in every situation of your life and not be ashamed of it, amen. But being brave, being courageous, hallelujah. It means standing firm in faith when waves crash and when the beach arose around us and around those we are called to lead or to love and to protect. Being men means building the lives of those we are responsible for on the bedrock that is Jesus Christ. But that can't happen unless our own lives are founded on Christ, who was a genuine, courageous and brave man. Hallelujah. Here are some ways we must act like men, regardless of our current life stage. Amen. We must fight in the first instance. Second Timothy 4, 7 says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Praise the name of the Lord. The sign of a good end to the Christian life is a life well fought, a race well run, and a faith well kept. Amen. Let me say that again. The sign of a good end to the Christian life is a life well fought, and a race well run, and a faith well kept amen and that was the apostle paul and that's what we're learning from him today we can't grow in godliness unless we are fighting amen the passive christian life is no christian life at all there are things that we as christian men will have to fight for and fight against amen Glory to God. That's why God has raised us up. Hallelujah. And he encourages us through the Apostle Paul to be brave. Hallelujah. To be courageous men of God. To be brave men of God. Amen. That means that we need to be well equipped for 
battle. Amen. We need to wear the armor of God as explained in Ephesians 6 verses 10 and 11. It says this from the Amplified Classic. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him, that strength which his boundless might provides. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier, which God supplies, that you may be able to successfully to stand up against all of the strategies and the deceits of the devil. Amen. So God doesn't send us out alone, but he gives us the necessary equipment that we can become spiritually alert, hallelujah, that we can be brave and courageous men of God, amen. Ephesians 6 verses 12 and 13 reminds us of something, for we are not wrestling with flesh and blood. This is from the Amplified Classic. For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents but against the, the, the despotisms, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. Therefore, put on God's complete armour. So we're reminded again, my beloved brothers, put on God's complete armour that you may, able, may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger and having done all the crisis demands to stand firmly in your place. All oh, glory be to God. I want to say to you, my beloved brothers, today, there are times we'll be on defense as temptation comes, needing faith to quench the flaming arrows of the wicked one. There are times we'll be on offence as we penetrate our dark world with God's word. What we don't do is abandon the actual fight by fighting for the things that do not last. But we contend for the things that will last. Amen. Father, we give you praise. I hope you're getting something from this teaching today you need to make sure you jot those scriptures down and you go right back to the word of god amen that we need to act like men men need to be challenged to act like men amen we must be brave we must be courageous hallelujah as we strive for godliness in our lives and that we can share that with those in our sphere of influence amen we fight the good fight of faith, according to 1 Timothy 6 and verse 12 from the Amplified Bible. It says this, fight the good fight of faith, of the faith. Lay hold of the eternal life to which you were summoned and for which you confessed the good confession of faith before many witnesses. Bless the name of the Lord. It's faith in Jesus Christ in the gospel and for the sake of the gospel in the world we are not fighting to do good deeds that god might be pleased with us come on we are fighting because god was and is pleased with the work of jesus on our behalf that's the gospel hallelujah and it creates men who act like men it creates men who are courageous men who are brave men who know when to stand up hallelujah for what is right for what is just glory be to god and something else we need to do is that we need to flee temptation oh god help each one of us as men to flee temptation every day we face inestimable temptations that require the fight it's true the devil is working on you and i wanting each of us to fall to fail he wants us to fail those that we have been called to lead, to love and protect. First Peter 5 and verse 8 reminds us in, 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 in the Amplified Classic, Be well balanced, my brothers, temperate, sober of mind, be vigilant and cautious at all times. For the enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a roaring lion in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. 
My God. So when you act like men, you'll understand the temptations around you are real. And so are the consequences of failing. There are all sorts of temptations. Some are common to most men. Some depend on your personality or disposition towards certain sins. But we need to fight against pride, lust, abusing power, apathy, and more than I have time to name. But you probably know what they are in your own lives. Wherever the war rages, men, we are to fight. We are to be courageous by bringing the word of God into every situation. And remember that we do all things through Christ who empowers us. We are ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into us. Oh, we are self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Glory be to God. So the implication in context, in context is that if you do not bring your worries and your cares to God, the devil will use depression and discouragement to devour you. And just as lions go after the feeble, the young, and the stragglers, so the enemy of our souls will always seek out those who are isolated, alone, or depressed to devour them. But we must be strong. We must be courageous. We must be brave, my beloved brothers, and step into godliness. Hallelujah. Trusting God. Doing what God says bringing the word of God into play in our everyday lives and in our everyday situations. Amen. And then another point, as we're going on, we must pursue God. Hallelujah. We must pursue him. The Bible says, you know, that he who hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be satisfied. Amen. Now, too many Christian men see the fight as only about avoiding sin. That's crucial. But there's also a positive fight that we must embrace. We fight as a pursuit of God. Amen. We don't want to be distracted from pursuing God. That we may know him better, more deeply. He is our greatest treasure. And knowing Jesus is our greatest joy. Amen. And that is why knowing scripture, a devotion to prayer, and the spiritual disciplines and walking in the spirit and the communion of the saints in the local church are so 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 important amen father we are grateful for you for this word amen there's so much for us to learn but i want us to get this teaching into our spirit remember we have been bought with a price we are his and knowing him better is our eternal pursuit and the source of our eternal blessings. 1 Corinthians 7.23 says you are bought with a price. Be not ye servants of men. Hallelujah. But be brave enough and encourage yourself and get into the word and believe the word. Amen. And use the word in your everyday situation and your everyday pursuit of God. Amen. The passive Christian life is no Christian life at all. Let's be, let us remember that. We pursue the fruit of the Spirit. Things like righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Amen to that. We pursue the full expression of our love for God through, through, through being living sacrifices of service to the church and world through using our talents and spiritual gifts. Oh, we bless the Lord. 1 Peter 4 verse 10 reminds us that uh, based on the gift each one has received, we are to use it to serve others as good managers of the varied grace of God. Amen. The Amplified Bible tells us in 1 Peter 4 and verse 10, it says, As each of you has received a gift, a particular spiritual talent, a gracious divine endowment, employ it for one another as befits good trustees of, of God's many-sided grace, faithful stewards of the extremely diverse powers and gifts granted to Christians by unmerited 
favor. Amen to that. If we act like men, we fight as a, as a pursuit of God and the things that God wants in the world. Amen. We are consistently pursuing the one who created us. Amen. To fully understand that we need to be brave and courageous in the things of God. And then we come to another point that in our courage and in, in, in our bravery, we are to worship God. Amen. We worship no matter what we worship. Amen. Now, I personally love to walk into a church and see and hear men singing loud praises to our God. Men should be an example to others of what praise looks like. They shouldn't be ashamed or embarrassed. If we are, that says a lot about what we don't know about the gospel. Of course, worship is so much more than singing. The Apostle Paul says in Romans 12, 1 and 2, that our spiritual worship is the giving over our whole lives on his altar. Amen. <coughs> Romans 12, 1 and 2 from the Amplified Classic says this, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you in, in view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. Bless the Lord. Do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitude, so that you may prove for yourselves what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. Amen. But there's something important about the vocal praise and worship of men who have gathered to give glory to our Saviour. When men act like men, they make it known that they are not the point, but Jesus is. Hallelujah. When you act like men, you'll understand the temptations around you, as we learned earlier, are real. So my beloved brothers, let us worship God. Hallelujah. It's all about Jesus. Amen. So we need to look at your life, my beloved brothers. Is your life characterized by courage, by strength and love? Are you fighting against temptation and in the pursuit of God? Would brothers and sisters in Christ say that you sing like a man who loves the Saviour? Maybe you need to step up right now. It's time for men to act like men, to be brave and courageous and bring the things of God to the forefront. Will you become that man that God desires you and has made you to be? We will continue next time with this teaching because there's still more to learn about quit you like men. If you are listening to this broadcast today and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal saviour, I want to say that you can come to know him today. Hallelujah. You can come to know the one who can change and transform your life. Amen. And if that is you today, you need to be reminded that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He didn't come to condemn the world. He came so that the world through him can be saved. So if you would like to know Jesus as your personal savior today, just repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me a sinner. I acknowledge my need of you. 
and I repent of all my sins and ask for forgiveness. I accept you as my Lord, my Saviour, my Redeemer and my Deliverer. I invite you now to be Lord of my life. Fill my heart with your love, your joy and your peace. Lord Jesus, I now receive you into my heart. Thank you for taking me as I am. Amen and amen and amen. If you have said this prayer today, I want to say to you that heaven is rejoicing over you right now. Do get in touch with us by going to our website, which is btmlifelight.co.uk and we will fill you in with more information regarding your newfound faith. And for all who have been watching this broadcast, I appreciate you. And I pray that as this broadcast has been a blessing to you, please share with others that it may be a blessing to them also. Amen. Remember, you can find out more about us by going to our website, btmlifelight.co.uk. Check us out there. Amen. In the meantime, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and keep you in perfect peace. So until next time, stay blessed, stay focused and stay safe. And remember, be that man. God bless you. If you want to engage your men, these resources are for you. Be that man. It's a man thing. Have you got your copy yet? Go to our website, btmlifelight.co.uk. Check it out there. Bye for now. A great resource for men.